Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today I woke up just a little bit early and I decided why not record one of these bullshit roadmap videos. So as the title says, the video is about a metaprogramming roadmap. It is more of a reference. The different metaprogramming styles available to you in C Sharp, what I think about them, what videos I've tried. So check out the description. Links to other videos are going to be there as well as some other links. Tell me what you think about this video in the comments. And as always, if you are enjoying these, leave a like and subscribe. Make sure that you have a coffee. And let's go ahead and get started. So what is metaprogramming? To put it simply, metaprogramming is one program consuming another program, and this program can also consume itself. And if you've ever used reflection, that is what that is. And if you're wondering about why would I want to learn metaprogramming, why is it useful? If you really take a look at it, Metaprogramming is one of the best advancements that you can make. If we start off with assembly, we're thinking, okay, assembly is very, very hard to write. We want something better. So we invent a program that consumes another program. That first program is a compiler. It consumes C code and then it spits out assembly on the other end. We then keep using this metaprogramming concept to come up with dynamically linked libraries, virtual machines, interpreters, etc. Much like software is meant to be configuration for the hardware, when your application becomes too rigid, you want to allow this space for essentially software for software, where you can again introduce this elasticity into your application or provide higher levels of abstraction. The first technique is probably my favorite. It is the interpreter. It can also be known as the interpreter pattern. You're basically saying whatever this language that I'm using, I don't like it. I'm going to take it all throw it in the bin, or actually you're going to build up some constructs and then you're going to accept some other blob of data. It can be JSON, it can be HD, it can be whatever. As long as you are capable of parsing it, translating it to instructions and then executing those instructions. Things like Python, JavaScript, uh, regex, xpath, jpath all live and reside in this area. I absolutely love using or building interpreters and integrating them into my applications. I think it is one of the most powerful concepts that you can actually adapt. The second tool in C Sharp that you have for metaprogramming is reflection. It's probably one of the things that most of the people are familiar with and is one of the more easier things to use. This is your application consuming its own code. At compile time, you're writing tons and tons of classes, tons of types, you're generating all of this information and then that information is lost at runtime. Reflection revives all of that information and allows you to actually use it. With reflection, hopefully it goes without saying that you're limited to the reflection API. That being said, you can only interact with methods like type off. So you have the type class and then that has get field, get method. Those are your only tools. And once you have that information, you have to mix it in with the other logic that you just have to produce on your own. A reflection was known to not be very fast. I think it is all right these days, much like everything else in .NET is pretty performant. And reflection can be used for many things uh, from solving your own programming problems uh, to business problems. For example, if you have many controllers, many endpoints on your API, you want to generate claims for each individual endpoint, you to write some reflection code, determine all of the endpoints that your application has, and then generate all the claims into your database. The third tool that is available to you is called the Expression API. Expression API is super powerful. It is C Sharp's version of code as data. Whatever code you write, it can be translated to an expression tree and then compiled down to IL code. Sometimes it is used in conjunction with the interpreter. Whatever script you're passing in, you're going to translate that to the expression API. So then you're actually executing individual IL instructions instead of your own makeshift functions. The concept is really powerful. It allows you to build up code at runtime and defer execution. For example, whenever you're using Entity Framework Core and you want to select into a new object, you're really passing an expression for a function. So the function, the Lambda function that you're passing never really gets executed. What happens under the hood is Entity Framework Core will actually take a look at the expression tree for that function and determine what properties are you trying to extract so it can actually map it to the query. 
So the code never gets executed. It is purely used as data. And because it has that data property, whatever logic you may have, you can slowly go about building up this tree. Later on down the line, compiling it to IL code or again, transforming it and compiling it to some other script. The expression API is my second most favorite thing to use and it's super useful when you know it. And I actually think that most C Sharp developers should dwell into this area and learn about it. For number four, we're gonna have source generators. When you're building your application, the source generator is a C Sharp application that runs in the background, which produces additional files. So you execute the build, the build doesn't start, the source generator runs first, produces additional files, and then they're included in the final build step to produce the artifacts. Source generators lately have been taken over and a lot of new libraries are being spun up where they are replacing all the other libraries that are using reflection. So instead of interacting with the reflection API, you just get C sharp code, which will compile down to IL instructions. I would say it's pretty important to understand what source generators are, not necessarily to write one. Although again, if you need that assembly to C language jump, where you're saying, look, I don't want to write this C sharp code anymore. I want some condensed notation. And then I want a bunch of things generated on the back. If you want that to happen before your application runs. So during the compilation of your application, source generators are great for this. At number five, we're going to have the Rosalind compiler. It sits very close to the source generator. What you're essentially doing is whatever this source generator thing has, this Rosalind compiler, all you're doing is pulling it into your application. What this gives you is again, if you have some kind of interpreter, you're going to execute some logic, or you can just take C sharp code, pass it to your application. And that Rosalind compiler is going to read it in, compile it into an assembly. You can load the assembly in memory, or you can then spit it out to a file. The Rosalind compiler approach is very useful. If you're going to be working with C sharp as your interpreted language or you don't know what code you're going to generate at compile time and rather it's determined at runtime. So at runtime, some code is going to run. It's going to build up a C sharp class. It's going to build up a C sharp function, some kind of functionality. You then want to go ahead, pass it to a compiler. It's going to compile that function, maybe into a DLL. Maybe then you will be able to use it further down the line during the lifetime of your application. The Rosalind compiler is really this line in the sand where we're saying that this is now super advanced territory because we're spitting out dynamic assemblies. We're loading in dynamic assemblies and that comes with assembly management, which can be a pretty hard problem, especially if some type is going to get cached and you want to unload an old version of the code, load in a new version of the code, but the old version is not going to unload because you still have a reference to the type from that old code. Basically, it's a very hard area and, and all of the other approaches that I'm going to talk here after suffer from the same problem. They're essentially plugins. Number six, we're going to have IL generation, very, very similar to the Roslyn compiler instead of writing up C sharp code, you're just straight up writing out IL opcodes. You're basically saying, I don't care about this C sharp compiler stuff. I know what instructions I want. And I'm just going to generate those again into a dynamic assembly that suffers from the same caching and assembly management problem. But IL generation, I would expect, you know what you're doing. Generally, I would advise stay away. Number seven, we have a dynamic module import. So you have your application running. You then have some kind of other application that you build. You have outputted a DLL. You take this DLL and you give it to your application. That DLL is loaded dynamically, effectively a plugin. And then you start using the types from that DLL. Again, same problems. If you compile a new DLL, you replace the old one with the new one and you need to reload it. You're in the same ballpark for assembly management problems. Dynamic modules are really useful if you need to achieve plugin architecture without actually compiling or generating IL code at runtime. You pre-compile your code and then you just ship the DLL and you just have to have the assembly management component. At number eight, I don't know, it's a pretty bad eight. Uh, I don't, I don't want to be throwing up gang signs or whatever. Number eight, we have IL weaving. 
This is probably one of the most hardest things that you can imagine. You are compiling your application, you have a bunch of IL code, maybe optimized, maybe not optimized, but then you have an application that is going to read that DLL, going to try to traverse that application or basically decompile it to some kind of understandable notation. And you're going to say, I want to insert IL instructions here, here or there essentially being able to enrich your application with more functionality after it has been compiled. Products like PostSharp use it to give you aspect-oriented programming, which is just that. You have some functionality like logging, tracing. You have a bunch of functions. You don't want to put the tracing logic into the function and into the thousands other places. You just want to take the tracing logic, which is very reusable, and just inject it to all of the places after you have compiled the application. From my very limited experience, IL weaving looks extremely hard. So unless you actually know that you have a problem that IL weaving solves, at that point, you're probably gonna know whether you should use it or not. But until then, just don't go near it. Don't even think about it. Last and least in my mind, at number nine, we have T4 templating. I've never touched T4 templating. I took a look at it. I saw it requires the functionality to be in Visual Studio, in Writer, or some kind of VS Code extension, essentially. It's not something that you have in your hand. Like, you're not building it. You have to make up some templates and then something additional on the side has to run. I really dislike this sort of stuff where there's just an additional component that I have to bring in. So I've never touched it and I'm not going to touch it. But in a nutshell, T4 templating is essentially PHP, but for C sharp code. It's templating, it's for lazy people. Again, think about the assembly to C programming language jump where we're saying we don't wanna write tons of assembly, we'll write a little bit of C and then we're gonna get tons of assembly and so on and so forth, you're just jumping. Here you will have your C sharp code and based on your C sharp code, you're gonna have this custom PHP thing to consume your C sharp code and generate some other source code. And this concludes the video. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Again, let me know in the comments. There is no source code here for you to get. Don't forget to check out the description. All the approaches that I've tried, I've probably made videos on them. So you can go ahead and check it out if you're interested in any of them. If you're enjoying my work, I ask you to please come support me on Patreon. It really helps out with the motivation to actually make these videos. And a very big and special thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.